Crafty Peeps is Angel Holt and Angel Holt Designs. I'm here to show you how to do a canvas. Um, this was requested by a crafter that I show this technique. And I want to give credit to the inspiration. And uh, the inspiration for this canvas is by Joanna Lip Lipninski. She's over in the Finnabar and Friends Open Studio Facebook group. I'll put a link in the description box down below for uh, all of y'all to go there and uh, look at all the wonderful canvases and projects that are being created um, in the style of Finnabar, which is one of my most favorite, favorite, favorite artists. And uh, so um, this is an old canvas I had, and um, I thought, well, I'm just going to reuse it, you know, because I had a piece of paper in the back and everything. And... Uh, um, so, I have already pre-cut out the image I want to use, and it's this image here, and you can find this over on my Pinterest board in the uh, Vintage Photos uh, board. I'll put a link in the description box down below. I have scaled this up, and uh, it's perfect for a 10 by 10 canvas. Um, if I get enough requests, I'll put... Um, I'll put this already pre-measured for a 10 for 10 canvas over in my Etsy. Um, but this is the photo I'm going to use. Now, this, today's style uh, with Joanna's, um, she had one color this way and one color this way. And she, the lady wanted me to show how you can blend, have real drastic color on each end, but blend them together to the center. Now, this is a canvas from Canvas Corp, and it is a natural canvas. That means it had no gesso on it whatsoever. So I did put gesso on it, and I happened to use the Finnabar Art Basics Heavy Gesso White. I love this gesso. Again, it's heavy. It's thick. It's like whipped cream, and it goes on beautifully. And um, so I have got this um, gessoed. Now... The next step I'm going to do, which will be speeded up, is I'm going to start gluing a bunch of elements on here. They're going to be wacky colors. They're not going to have, you're going to be like, what is this woman doing? Trust me, it will all come out at the end. So, um, if you want to know more how I prep my photos for uh, canvases like this, you can look up um, Finnabar inspired canvases on my uh, channel, or you can just look up um, canvases and um, I'm going to be playing with uh, just different elements and, di and, and building some backgrounds and everything so um, it's going to be a lot and uh, so I hope you're settled in to watch okay so let's get started
Okay, ladies, if you hear a rumbling in the back, it is because it's storming here and the thunder's rolling and everything, which is perfect craft weather uh, to me. But we're having to watch the weather because, um, you know, they're calling for some severe storms. So um, right here, I'm just going to take a little bit of hot glue and pin those edges down just like that. Um, the sprays that I use are all from Lindy's Stamp Game. And uh, you'll see a um, down there on the bottom there, you'll see um, a list of the colors pop up that I used. And I'll probably be using a little bit more. Um, but now I want to blend the lighter in a little bit more. And you can't keep adding light to dark because it'll never work. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your white gesso back out and your paintbrush. I'm using a one inch paintbrush here and you're just going to dab and then what you're going to do where you want to add some more white Some more of the lighter colors you're going to blend in the white gesso just like that in fact you can bring it over into some of the dark like this If you want you know just to give it character and as you see once I dry that, I'll have more of a lighter color that I can play with. Okay, so let me dry this. It should dry quickly. Okay, now I can go back in with the lighter pink. Touch that and this one. Ooh, that was a big thunder. And then I'm going to add just a touch of that and then go back in with the silver gray and then over here we'll add some more black especially to the corner edges here like that and then add some of the darker purples and after I do this, I'm going to have to get off the computer. You hear my dog? She's scared to death of storms. So, there you go. Um, 
I love Lindy sprays. They really, 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 really work amazingly. And there we go. I'm probably going to add some yellow in there, just hints and uh, yellow. And but you hear that? I gotta go. So I will be back when the storm's over. Okay, what I've done is, is I've dried it, and then I picked up some of my white gesso, and the areas that I really, really want white, I'm layering it on like crazy with the white gesso, like this, and then I'm going to bring in some white over the edges here, like this. And as you do this, your spray is still wet, so it'll blend in with your spray and make a lighter pinky color, which is what you want, so that you can create a contrast. And as you see, it fades into the purple, and then it goes on out through here. So it's just, a, it's all about blending and getting what you want out there. See, like you can bring the white on through to the the edge here. Like that. Bring it up across the top here. Just brush it. And keep on. I would let this dry thoroughly because this is really saturated. And that is what I'm going to do. And so you can take your brush and push into some of those crevices like this and really give it some texture like that. Bring it on up through there like that. There you go. And like I said, I'm going to add a touch of yellow, and I'm going to be using Lindy's California Poppy Gold. And I'm just going to add it right there. Just a touch. So, there we go. Now, I'm going to let this dry, because it's, like I said, it's really, really saturated. And, um, in fact, I am going to set it to where air can flow both underneath it and on top just like that and this will be dry in a couple of hours because again this is a um, cloth canvas and it is soaking up a lot and there we go I'll fix that later but all right so there's the beginnings of it ladies so I'll be back Okay, ladies, the canvas is completely dry to the touch. I let it dry overnight, um, and now I'm going to apply white gesso in some areas that I really want to highlight in the white. And basically, you're dry brushing these. This um, don't just really lightly coat your paintbrush, and then you can dry brush it just like that. And then, again, you can bring it down into uh, the bottom here. And let me, my mouse is in the way. There we go. And, again, I'm going to bring some of the white down in here and then take it and just go along this edge here with the white. I've already pre-sprayed um, some flowers and 
in the same colors that I used on the canvas. And now I'm going to get ready to, this will dry really quickly. I won't need to um, use the heat gun or anything. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I will be applying these with um, all of my elements with uh, hot glue, especially my flowers. And let me get my photo. Okay, here's my photo. I think it looks good right there. And, all right, now I'm just going to take the hot glue and apply the photo. There we go. And now I'm going to start adding flowers. I'm going to put one, that's my largest one. And this one was painted, um, this is just a fabric flower. And I sprayed it in purples and I the silver that you see on the edges here um, I use silver Inca gold so the first thing I'm going to do is place my larger flowers first again these are some old Prima flowers I found in my junk drawer. They need to bring more out like this. These are really awesome to um, work with. Okay, we'll put one there. Okay, so I have three main uh, flowers. You want to keep it in uh, odd numbers. And now what you're going to see me do in the video speed up is I am going to continue the process of placing everything on there. Okay, so let's get started.
Okay, as you can see, there's a, a, you know, a variety of different things here that I've glued on to here, and I am not done. I know some of them don't even match the color scape, but all will be better. Um, so I'm adding another broken flourish there. And I've got some other pieces here I've laid out, but I want to get a few things done here. Now, um, the technique of getting everything uniformed and in the right color, um, you're going to have to gesso everything. And you can do that with um, um, any gesso that you have. I'm trying to find a. I use this brush. So, so that if once you gesso everything, then it will take color of the the color pattern that you have going on, and gesso um, gives everything a matted coat, and that way the color will stick so um, all you're going to do is just brush on and I have um, used metal pieces buttons broken um, chipboard pieces just a variety of different things and see like you just want to paint over your brushes I mean your brushes your uh, buttons and um, all of your your pieces here and you probably might ask well why didn't you do all this beforehand well Sometimes it just doesn't work out like that. You just want, like you can comb in. And uh, to help hold my metal pieces, I tried a new glue by E6000. I found it. Um, at Walmart and I'll show you here in just a second let me get this painting and the background you can just Go back in there and paint it some more. Like that. This gesso dries very quickly. Okay, um, it's this stuff. It's called E6000 Extreme Tack. Um, and it sticks on contact. So I'm trying it. Um, the curing rate on this, eight hours. Tack it on your project and enjoy washable after 72 so I don't know it was something new if it doesn't work I'll just re-glue them on there but it should it says it holds metals and E6000 has always been um, really good so that's what I'm doing here is just painting everything with white gesso and then I will go back in and add my bling and all of this stuff but once this dries then I will go back in and I'll show you that um, 
I will paint, not spray. I might spray a little bit, but my main objective is to paint the on the color. so that I can keep the color separated. So I'm going to finish painting this up and then once it dries I'll be back and ready to paint it but that's basically what you're going to do is you're going to gesso everything just like that and take your time with it because in some things you might have to add more layers of gesso. So, I use a lot of Prima little wooden pieces in here. Now the flowers that I've already sprayed that match it, I'm not just sewing those because they're already been sprayed and they're ready for what I need them for so all right so I will see you in a few okay now I protected my photo so now I'm going to go in with you want to start with your lightest color first okay because that's the one you always want to start with your lights so I'm just going Spray my purples in here. Like that. Then I'm going to go in with a darker purple. go in and I'm going to dry this. Now, don't worry if you get some on the photo at the bottom because you can hide that or you can accentuate that. It all depends on what you're wanting to do. Now, I dry in between color layering because it helps. Now I'm going to go in with a strong black. Again, I'm going to dry this and because we layered the gesso as you see the color takes to all of the plastic and the metal beautifully because we put all of that gesso on the pieces Now I'm going to remove the photo. And as you see here, I have a strong line right there. Well, I'm going to blend that out. I'm going to pick up some of this color off my table.
here and want to blend it out. Just like that. I'm going to pick up this purple. See? Now, now what you're going to do is you're going to take your paintbrush and you're going to pick up color that you have gotten saturated with. Pick it up off some of your elements. And just Do it like that and brush it on. Okay, I feel I need something right there. And I think another rose would look gorgeous. Just like that. And with this rose, I am going to leave it the, its original color so that you can have some white um, contrast here, some lighter purple. And uh, what you can do, if you want to bring in some light, like tip the, the purple and then it fades into the pink, um, you can get a little bit of gesso. Let me get my gesso out. Okay, take a little bit of gesso and take that color of purple just enough to, you're going to water it down a little bit like that. You're going to, can y'all see what I'm doing here? There we go. Now you're going to Now you're going to take that and treat it as if these pieces This you're going to paint just like this. Now I'm adding a softer so now that looks Well blended in there. What are you doing home early? Been in the dentist all day. Well, I had to go back and get it readjusted. Well. Are you in pain? Well, that's good. Sorry, my husband went to the dentist. So as you can see now, what I'm doing here is just making it look like, you know, it's okay. All right. Like it's um, been painted, you know, and then you can go back in with your dark if you want I'm darken this one up just a little bit more 
just along this edge like that. Now I'm going to dry this. Make sure it's thoroughly dry for, um, so that you are going to, I'm going to be adding some silver contrast to everything. So I want to make sure everything is dry. Fluff up your flowers as you dry them. Okay, so now what I want to do is work on I tell you what, black anything is messy. I got a little spray on the photo, but it just added to it. It's just like little boop, boop, spritz of it, and it just makes it look more authentic, I think. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to brighten up this pink area. We're going to use some gesso to do that. And I want to kind of accentuate the lace here a little better. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to gesso all of this. Just like we've done before. I've gessoed, gessoed it once. But I really want it gessoed because this is the lighter corner of the canvas. And then see, I can brush and blend that right in just like that. Pull, pull toward the middle. All right, so now I'm going to dry that and work with the pink. Okay, I am going to add just a hint of gold right in here, just one spurt. And I'm going to protect my photo like that. And what this is, it's just adding some different color, just like that. Just a little bit. Because Joanna's canvas has just a hair of, of yellow in it. And I think I'm going to put a spritz of it over here too. Like that. 
love sprays. They make the world go round. Okay. Now, this one, we're just going to do that. And we're going to take a wet brush, rather wet, and we're going to blend. Blend, 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 blend. We're going to blend this out. And mm, that might be too purpley. this one yeah, that'll work I'm gonna pull from that color add some more pink Blend, 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 blend. Add some more here. Blend. Blend, blend, blend. This is a piece of uh, Prima's metal, like the wrought iron uh, bindings or collection. I'm going to dry that. As you can see, I think it's coming out pretty snazzy. Okay, I want to do one more thing. I'm going to blend out this area a little bit more with some gesso. Just a hint. Just a hint. What that is, that's just softening that purple to blend on into the pink. You see there just like that bam and there you go all right now the next thing that I do when I'm using a lot of spray is I go through and make sure I've got it like if you have like deep uh, buttons or anything like that, I go through and make sure I've got all of it souped up and everything. So there we go. And if I need to, I can blend. Just by blending that. Like if you see like you've got a, a just a, a, a spray block, you can just take your wet brush and blend it in because these sprays are water soluble. So you can see how I'm adding some lightness to the piece here and it's already um, got white gesso on it. You can just take your brush, a really, 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 really dry brush, and 
gonna get a little bit. Try my brush and blend that in like that. So now what I'm doing is giving some things some highlight while keeping my low light. Just like that. Like you kiss this button right there. Kiss that right there. Looks good to me. See what this is doing is keeping that lighter um, purple along the edge here like this. Okay. All right, so now with a dry brush, we're gonna start adding some silver um, ink of gold. And you're just going to dry brush that silver right on there to bring out that dark colors that we used. Okay, I'm gonna put some on here, put a little bit on there like that. You can see here. Just that touch of silver, ink of gold. Adds such beauty to the pieces. And if some of your pieces, you're finding some of your pieces are still a little damp, just as you're brushing them, hold them, you know, so that you can and bring that silver on into the lighter um, areas like that. Let me zoom in so you can see how this process is working. Okay. There we go. Turn it around. See how it's bringing. I'm filming. What is it? Life never ceases to dip when creating. You can see I'm really bringing out All of these colors. A lot of people ask me, um, how long does it take to make a canvas like this? Up where, upwards of six hours. Ow! Because you've got um, my cat's eating my toes. Um, because you've got all of the spraying and the drying, spraying and the drying, spraying and the drying time 
and then you've got to figure out your placement. Right here, I'm just going to highlight. Oh. You know, you just gotta work it and put the time into it. And when, like, somebody, some people ask me, well, what do you charge? It depends on what I put in it, it all depends on the size, um, the product, of course, the time, all of that is. Um, calculated into the price. This one will be for sale in my Etsy. I don't know for how much yet. Depends on what more I do to it. But as you see, I'm going through and adding my own Touches to things here like that. Let's see how pretty that is. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing to these lighter areas like that. I'm bringing into all the metal, the metal leafing, and then you're going to bring it up here to highlight some areas here. You can dry brush it in there because there's enough product on my brush to do that. Oh, y'all are not seeing it. Sorry. But that, my friends, is how you make, you know, how I would make um, a double colored canvas. I think I'm going to do some more blending classes on how you can blend um, your pieces, you know, how you can, let me back out, on how you can blend those. There we go. Just bring that color right on through there, like that. And then, if you want, after you've got your silver on, I have a few pieces here that I want to silver up. This is some Tim Holtz y'all saw me put together. Sure, I got it like that. And now I'm going to add should I put it up here? Yeah, I'm gonna put it right up there. Now I'm going to go in and add different elements that I want to add. So I'm going to
Now these are just some metal leaves. But I want you to note, wherever you put this stuff, hot glue will not stick to it. So make sure you leave um, an area where the hot glue can stick. Set that in there like that. Um, oh, I got a butterfly I want to put in. I'm going to change the color. This is just a little metal butterfly. Like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a good dry and um, I think I'm going to put it right there. Um, give this a good dry and then I'm going to come back and fill some of my flowers centers and that'll be it my friends. There you go. Okay. So let me gather up some more supplies and clean up my big ass mess I have here because it's everywhere and I will be right back. <laughs> well ladies, there you have it. I have added some Sororsky crystal elements onto the canvas as you see here. Um, they're inside the flowers there and uh, this project is ready to hang or gift to someone or admire yourselves and I'm going to sign the back of it right on here and it's 6 2015 always sign your work ladies all right um Thank you for stopping by and watching another fabulous tutorial. Like always, please like and share and subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done so, share my channel with some crafty peeps that you think would enjoy um, my uh, aesthetic of crafting. Also, uh, let me know what you think of the project. And uh, again, share, 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 and like, 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 and because that helps me out so much. And uh, I appreciate every one of you stopping by to watch this. And... Uh, also, I want to thank um, Joanne Lipniski at Cinnabar and Friends Open Studio Facebook group uh, for the wonderful inspiration. And uh, so thank you so much. I really enjoyed this process. And uh, I hope you all liked it. So until next time, uh, stay for photos. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.